Howdy peeps and welcome to another of my how I do videos. I won't say tutorials because there's probably other ways of doing things. It's just the way I do it. And today we're going to be looking at IndyLink tracks. Uh, the type that can be found on T90s, most Trumpeter Russian armor kits, um, Dragon kits with magic uh, magic tracks, pretty much anything that hasn't got the workable single link tracks. This works exactly the same if you're using indie link tracks as well, or link and length tracks. Sorry. So let's get started. Now, as some of you may or may not know, the trumpeter tracks for the uh, modern Russian armor do have separate guide horns so I've already glued all those on and all the sprue all the track links have been cut off the sprue just to make things easier. Tools we're gonna need straight edge ruler which I'll explain about a bit in a mo and glue. Now I use the Revel contactor, I mean excuse the state of the pot it's <laughs> pretty old and this is all I use it for. But I use it because it's a relatively slow setting glue and has a precise needle applicator which means you can get it exactly where you want it. It tends not to happen that way as it is a bit runny but there we go. Anyway now I've got one set ready to glue so I shall stick some glue on those and then I shall show you how I line them all up. Now these do come with a jig, there's a jig on each uh, track link sprue. I just find it easy to do it without using the jig. Um, I have had it before, I put a bit too much glue on and glue the tracks of the jig. Say no more. Anyway so we grab our glue and we literally, all our links are together here anyway, ready. Careful, careful. And we just run the glue down all the gaps between the tracks and it's, it's going to get a bit messy, you're not going to be able to keep this completely accurate. Now I don't like to use the Tamiya Extra Thin for this simply because of the speed at which it sets. Um, this, I say the Rebel, it does take longer to set to a point where you can move the tracks and put them on the model but it doesn't set so quickly <laughs> you don't get a chance to put the tracks on the model you can see these are particularly well lined up we can soon sort that I hope I've actually got everything in shot yeah I have and we're literally going along popping glue in between each link. Uh, you have to excuse if you can hear the wind in the background, it's fairly howling again today. Um, this, despite it being June, we've had what I would call more autumnal weather. Right, so, they're glued, and yeah, they're not particularly straight or level, so we get our steel roller, which obviously isn't going to stick to the poly cement and just give them a good press down, make sure they're all flat and level and we can probably, it's probably a bit early to be doing this but never mind take them off the tape he says as they stick back down, move them out of the way make sure they're flat and level and the other use of the ruler is to make sure they're straight as well. Just a little bit of adjusting just to make sure we're pretty much bang on straight. And again just give them a tamp down and make sure they're flat. Now I'll show you what this is. This is literally 
one piece of tape upside down so it's sticky side up and then two smaller bits to stick it down to the mat. Stick one side down first, pull it tight, stick the other side down. What this means is you're not chasing the track links all over your cutting mat or whatever service you're using. Um, and the other use of the steel ruler is if you want to get them straight before you start, you can stick the ruler across there. Although mine is a bit thin for this, especially with these tracks. And you literally just start lining them up. Now I am kind of cheating with this build. Um, as I've found out in the past, as people who know me will know, I build quite a lot of Russian armour. Um, quite a lot of trumpeter Russian armour as well. So I've built plenty of T-80s, 72s, 90s, all that kind of good stuff. And I know how much of a pig it is to get the tracks onto the vehicle <laughs> once you put the side skirts on. Now with some of the earlier modern stuff that isn't such an issue because the side skirts aren't too big or you can leave them off till the end. Whereas with the T90 there's a lot of attachments. You've got PE that runs between the side skirts and the main hull. You've got fuel pipes. So leaving it till after it's all painted is a bit of a pig to do. Um, and if you take the time and carefully build all your tracks and get all your sags set and everything lovely you then find out you can't actually fit the tracks to it once it's been put together so the options are for all tracks which given how much I paid for this kit would be more than the kit cost try and fudge it with the side skirts and leaving them, leaving them off and then having to touch up and paint all around them but what I do is because they're not visible and the only way you're ever going to tell is if someone picks the model up and turns it right over and shines a light up into the, <laughs> up into the fenders you'll never know they're not there um, so as you saw with the one I showed, which is the track I've already done, there's no top run on these. Let's say won't be visible, and to fit them on once the model is all together, you just clip it around the rear sprocket and then pop it around the idler, and they stay there. You don't swear because you put 83 links together for each side, and you found you only really need 48. Right, which, by the way, is the amount you need. <laughs> Not that I know these things off heart or anything. Now yeah, I'll give that a quick tamp down. Back at it with the glue. <coughs> Excuse me, we go over it again. It's easy enough. He says hoping he hasn't just run out of glue, which would be really embarrassing. Although I do have a couple of small pots of it somewhere. Uh, the, uh, the main reason, if I'm going to buy a starter kit of something, I'll buy a Revel one rather than an Airfix. It's not because of the model. It's because the glue and the paints in it are actually usable. Um, I really hate the Humboldt acrylics and the Humboldt poly cement. I'd rather not ever use that if I can get away with it. Humble brushes aren't too bad, and the Revel ones are shocking. But, uh, the kits are fairly similar, there's not a huge amount between them. You just get uh, the extra guff you get with it, as I say, the paint and glue you can actually and will actually use. So to me, it seems a better idea. Which is why I've got a few tubs of con contact. I mean, I've had this one a couple of years anyway. Surprised it's not empty yet. Anyways, there we go. That's all those done. We shall again squash them down. Yeah, they're straight enough. 
Well, with a bit of luck, if I rotate the cutting mat so that that side's out of the way, we can move that out of the way. Bring the tank back in. As you can see, peel off our ready made tr track. Here's one I made earlier. Now, these are the ones I've just glued, and as the sprocket end is the most awkward because you've got teeth to line up, I'm trying to do this in camera shot. So, we literally run the guide teeth in between the uh, road wheels, wrap a couple of teeth around the sprocket position the track where we want it about there and we literally just set that down to set and there you go indie link tracks the easy well i'll say the easy way my way um, once i've got these built and the rest of the tank built i will do another how I do on painting tracks which again I use a fairly simple technique which is just paint, uh, primer, paint, wash and then a couple of little farty bits at the end just to make them look a bit poncier but hopefully that will give uh, the people who've been asking an idea of how I do it and for me that's a bloody short video so Make sure to keep watching, live at the bench on Fridays, International Scale Modeler Forum and Facebook page and YouTube channel, great sources of information. Ultimate products, modeling products, sorry, for oh, your cleaners, thinners, sanders, washes, files, all sorts. Just check out the website, there's all sorts on there aircraft.net as well for all, pretty much all your airbrush needs especially if you're in the UK and also shout out the Starry Syndicate and Red Dragon Model Works keep up the good work Gil I'll also give another shout out to uh, <coughs> a recent joinee to our fraternity of plastic molesters that's uh, Graham Pearson. His YouTube channel is, oh, let me get this right, Black73Cat. Um, he originally was doing wild camping videos, but now he's started modelling, so he's putting some videos up there. Uh, all very interesting. It's modelling from a complete noob's perspective. Um, so, yeah, shout out to Graham. And... Anything else I've got is just pure waffling, which I'm sure you really don't want to hear. So, keep modelling, have fun, and enjoy the ride. Bye-bye.